And welcome to our final Charlotte Bobcat, a thing of the past now. Post game show. I'm the coach Dick Cox, joined by Dustin Pfeiffer. Bobcats had a tall task tonight. They were down 3 0 uh, without their warrior and their leader. Uh, Big Al did not play tonight, though. But I tell you what, this team came out and played with a heck of a lot of heart. And again, and I had a chance to talk to Coach Clifford after the ball game, and I think they played as a reflection of their coach tonight. They battled and scrapped and clawed, and were right there in it with the Heat. Uh, Heat got a little bit of a lead at the end of the third quarter, but Bobcats came back, got it to single digits, though. But I'm proud of this team and the way they played this season and the way they came out. It would have been easy to have mailed it in tonight because no team team has ever come back from a 3-0 deficit ever and they played hard tonight well they, they definitely did coach and one thing we've said all year long I mean and two words with this team is fight and effort I mean and the, like you said that is a reflection of their coach I mean they always laid on out on the floor regardless if they're the you know if they're the underdogs against like they were against the heat regardless if they're down 3-0 without their best player Al Jefferson you said it coming into the building tonight you knew how much this team fought but being down 3-0 and being without a guy like Al Jefferson even though you fight like a team, well, will you come out and really be able to put it all on the line? And they did. Kimba came out hot. They, they got a lead at the end of the first quarter. They led at halftime. This crowd was giving them a standing ovation. They were fighting hard. They were, they, you know, it was a physical game in that first half, Coach. They were, they were going back and forth, and the Bobcats didn't back down. So you got to give them a lot of credit. But like you said, in the second half, it's really all about the execution in the playoffs and the talent on the floor. And really, everybody knows that Miami is one of the most talented teams in the NBA, and they're the defending two-time champs. So they know how to execute the playoffs and they made the plays down the stretch um, and they were able to get the win and, and go ahead and close out the sweep. And I will go as far as to say I'm not a Miami fan. I'm a Boston Celtics from the days fan. Boston's yeah. rebuilding right now. But from top to bottom, they've got as talented of a team maybe as any team's ever had. Well, they definitely have one of the most talented teams just because when you have three NBA superstars like LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh, I mean, you're easily going to be one of the top two talented teams in the NBA and be one of the most talented teams ever because you don't see many teams in the past have that three biggest superstars on one team. So obviously, the, you can say that they're going to outmatch anybody when it comes to talent. And that starts at the top of LeBron James, Coach. I mean, we, we watched it this series. You know, Wade was, was healthy and he played well and Bosh made some big shots down the stretch. But when you watch who controls the pace of the game, on, on both ends of the floor, really, and you watch how he gets other guys involved, and then he scores when he needs to score. I mean, really, LeBron James, if there's any doubt if who's the best player in the NBA, I know that Kevin Durant's probably going to win the MVP, but when you look at all-around games and you look at who gets his team involved and who, who knows what to do when, LeBron James is, is, is the best player on the planet to me, and, I, and he showed it in this series. And if you come out and you watch him in person, you can say, I mean, you can see it on the floor. And, and, and I will say this. I will honestly say, having an opportunity of watching him play back-to-back -back games here in the last couple of days, that I have gained more respect for him. I still will hold it against him probably forever the way he treated my little friend there. And I'm going to stand up for Tron, though. But he's a very intelligent guy, excellent player, played. And people didn't realize, and I kept telling you this, he's hurt. He's hurt out there. And what did he do? He quit driving to the basket because his knee was hurt from getting kneed there and starts hitting jumpers where he doesn't have to. The guy is talented. And and then when you take him away, then you get the unsung hero, Chris Bosch, who doesn't get enough respect on this team, starts nailing down shots from the side. And then it's like he said, too, when, we, when I talked to LeBron and asked him about the depth of this team, you got guys like Jones comes in, hits three threes. Norris, you, Cole. Norris Cole. You've got a Chris ba uh, a Shane Battier sitting over there who did not even play but two minutes the last couple of games here, didn't even play tonight, who was a former all-star type player and stuff like that. Greg Oden, these kind of guys just waiting for their chance. And you wait and see before it's all said and done, one of those guys is going to step up and have a big game. Well, they definitely are. And, and again, I, I've said it since the start of the year, and, and I'll, I'll still ride it through the end. I think that, I mean, the Heat, I think the Heat are going to win the championship. I think they're going to three-peat. And when you talk about a three-peat, you talk about what a feat that is. It's really, I mean, it's so hard to do. Only a couple of teams have done it. Um, but I really think they're going to do it. I, I don't think there's really any any matchups in the East that they can't get over. I think Brooklyn would be a tough series, but they're in a battle with Toronto right now. Um, and then it really depends on in the West who they match up with of how tough the series will be. But I, I, one thing I kind of heard from LeBron in the postgame, Coach, is somebody asked him about how he feels about his game, and he says he thinks he's starting to find his game. Well, if he hasn't found his complete game yet, these teams need to watch out because you go out tonight, I think he was close to 30 points again. At 31 points, he assists. had nine assists and seven rebounds. So, I mean, he – 
and, and that's the thing, Coach. And, and I know we want to talk about the Bobcats and we'll get to them, but you got to give credit where credit is due to the Heat. And and I, and I think one thing that we can appreciate, like you said, you, you've gained some more respect about LeBron is he's not just a superstar who's all about going out there and ball hogging and scoring and, and, and being flashy. Yes, he makes some flashy pays. Yes, he may whine a couple of times about some calls. That happens all over the NBA. And the thing about it is he goes out there to play a team game. And that's why you look at when we talk about the last two games as talented roster when there's seven guys in double figures. It's because your main player is dishing out nine assists. And I mean, that's just when you have that complete team effort and you have a guy who's your best player who buys into the team game, you're really going to be successful. And that's what we've seen over these past couple of years with the Heat. And one thing I respect for, too, that I watched when the game was over LeBron sprinted down, went over and spoke to Al Jefferson, went over and spoke to Michael Jordan, and congratulated the two of them and every Bobcat player. And and, and that impressed me, that I like that. And, and the Miami Heat players came over. Uh, their coach gave the Bobcats a lot of respect, up-and-coming team and all that would have been easy to say, oh, you know, talked about we, I, 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 and stuff, what an easy series we had and like that. And they didn't. They know that, that you know, their coach said that the ball bounced a couple of ways different. We could still be playing two, three more games in this series. Yeah, they, they definitely gave a lot of respect to the Bobcats. Coach Polster talked about it. You know, even though it's a sweep, it, w- it was all four were tough games. And LeBron actually brought it up a few times. Um, in these past two nights in the post-game press conferences is that in Miami, they could have gotten beaten in Miami. They, they didn't play their best basketball, and the Bobcats were right there ready to play. They got it within one with 10 seconds left in that game, too. And I honestly think one of the reasons that it was a sweep was because I think that he realized after that second game when they almost let one slip away that, hey, the Bobcats are here to play, and they're in this series. We better wake up, and that's what allowed them to come down here and get more prepared and more focused and be ready to go. But LeBron said it. He, he's happy you know, he's happy for the Bobcats that they're a franchise that's on the rise back in the playoffs, and he said he doesn't know. you know, He doesn't look at what their situation is with cap room and stuff like that, but he definitely knows from looking at Kimba's game and looking at Big Al that this is a team on the rise, and, and Coach Spolster shared the same thing. So, at, all talk about the Bobcats from the Heat side was a lot of respect, and, and they knew that even though this was a sweep, this was a tough series for them, and it was good for them to get tested. Let's talk about the Bobcats for a minute now. Uh, again, this is a team won 43 ball games this year. Uh, and again, Alan, I give you kudos. You said 36, and we kind of laughed at you because that was a huge jump going from 21 to 36. Though, But they won 43 games and could have. They were one game away from finishing fifth, I believe, in the East. One win away, and you look back and I know that would make you pull your hair out. Uh, you've seen how I've had a lot of those, those nights in doing that in coaching. But, you know, they're making progress and all. And, and they have got two guys on that team that tonight – this showed me and I had a chance to talk to Josh McRoberts that guy is a winner and I think even you know coach Clifford made that comment too that he proved he is a definite power forward starter in the NBA but that McRoberts tonight had 10 points 10 rebounds and he probably showed more guts one time LeBron had a breakaway layup and he's basically this is our house went down fouled him would not give up the layup and there's so many times that I have told my players in straight we do not give up dunks in our house. And just the little things that he's done uh, to set up his teammates and like that, though. But I, I made the comment several times during the game. It, I would take any time Josh McRoberts and Kimball Walker on my team. Well, definitely. Those two guys fall to the end. Definitely McRoberts kind of turned into the enforcer for this team throughout the series, kind of protecting the paint. Um, and again, I go back, you talked about McRoberts, I go back to my guy, Kimball Walker. I mean, the guy, we've seen it since college. I mean, it's not, it's, not a, it's not something that not a lot of people know about. Everybody knows that this guy is a winner. The way he led UConn to a national championship, he's a competitor, he lays it all on the line. And for him, the way he came out to start this game against the Miami Heat without Big Al Jefferson, the way he came out, I think he scored 10 of the first 12 points. He did. I mean, he, he was just, and, and, and even Coach Spolster said after the game, he was at a whole other gear than they've seen this entire series. And they said that this, this Kimball Walker guy is, is a player on the rise and and I've said it from day one like you said I'll have him on my team any day I think he is a perfect captain I think he's a leader and I think if you have a leader like that along with Big Al on this team for the future you're only going to have good things and I mean you just that that's what you want to see from your team with your back against the wall you want to have guys who are going to go out there and leave it all on the court and that's what they were able to do tonight and you have to be proud of that effort you know it's not my say but I would politic and campaign right now if I were making a choice that would be two of my captains for next year I don't think there's any doubt because, again, I, I, they, you lead by example, you lead by the way you play. And, again, I, it meant a lot to me that I shared with Josh McRoberts after the game that I love the way you play the game. I love the little things you do. I love the way you're a team player. And 
and I told him, I said, you could be in my foxhole any day. And, and he would very sincerely said, I really appreciate that. He said, you don't know how much that means to me. Because I told him I was a high school and college coach for over 27 years, though. But that's the thing I like about these guys. And Kim made the comment, great team chemistry. They did things off the floor together. And again, you know, and, and I know this from coaching, when you've got good team chemistry, you know your brother, your teammates got your back covered and will do anything for you. You can't lose when you've got that kind of camaraderie. Well, the thing about it is, is, is when you're coming into a series like this and you're going against the Miami Heat, who, who you know are the more talented team, everybody in the building knows it, everybody watching it knows but if you have great team chemistry and you play with heart and you leave it all on the line and you play together, that sometimes can over t overcome the talent discrepancy there is. So even though the, the Heat were more talented, I think the chemistry that the Bobcats play with, the leadership that they play with, and the effort that they play with is what, even though they got swept, is what helped them stay close in three out of these four games. Because you got to think about it. The first game was an 11-point win, although the Bobcats were in single digits in the fourth quarter. Second game was a loss by four. The third game got out of hand, but the first half was pretty close. So really only one game out of this series was like a got to a 26-point lead. And the, this game here stayed around double digits, got single digits in the fourth quarter so they were in all of these games and that's what team chemistry will do to overcome the talent discrepancy that the Heat have on that side and I think that segues into a perfect point when somebody asked Coach Clifford after the game what was the biggest reasons for your team to have this big improvement and to win 43 games? And he said, obviously, number one is Al Jefferson. He said, when you have the same four starters coming back and you just replace one starter and you only bring, and you bring in Al Jefferson, of course, he's going to be the big one of the biggest reasons, if not the biggest reason, this team got so much better. Nobody expected Al to do what he did. And for him to do that in his first year is great. Who knows what he'll do in year two? The second thing he said was the improvement of Kimball Walker at the point guard position, who we've been talking about. For him to come out and be a better passer, he said in the offseason he wants to work on that even more and work on his shooting to be more consistent. And then the third thing you've already talked about was Josh McRoberts, seeing that he could be a starting power forward night in and night out. Those were the three biggest things that Coach Clifford said made this team the biggest improvement to get to 43 wins this year. And that's why I think, you know, McRoberts has a player option for next year, so he'll decide what he wants to do. He can test the free agency market if he wants. But you'll, mo you'll definitely see Allen Kim about back here. Most likely you'll see McRoberts back here too. And for Bobcats fans, that should be a good thing because of what they've done for this team this year. And I could be wrong, but I think that Josh McRoberts has found a home here. That I think that the, the way the team is, I think the, the city of Charlotte has embraced him. They like the way he plays. He got a lot of cheers. Well, first of all, they love him for knocking LeBron down in the yeah, game. Once, there, if, if people didn't <laughs> like him because of his Duke days, and they still had, even though they liked him. They forgot him, the Duke days after that. Even though they liked that. him as Bobcats, he definitely won some people over with that. So, uh, the only thing I'll say with McRoberts is, I, I, again, I expect him to be back, but if he does go out there and decide to test the free agency market, because, hey, if he's playing night in and night out as a starter, maybe he's earned himself a paycheck around this league. I mean, he's getting paid here, but maybe somebody says, hey, we've seen what he's done. We want to pay a little more for him. And that'll be the question as the Bobcats have a lot of cap room. Will they want to pay a little extra to keep him here? Or will they want to maybe think you know, that Cody is able, maybe they think in offseason with Cody, he's able to step in and be the starting four. We don't know that because we don't know how much he's going to improve in the offseason. I expect Meg Roberts to be here. I think he likes being here. Like you said, I think he's kind of found a home. So I, I think maybe he can just use his player option and, and play one more year here and then see what happens with free agency so either no doubt about it whatever happens with McRoberts we've talked about it these last few games kind of knowing the season was winding down this team has a bright future in the offseason it is a totally different feeling heading into this offseason than it was when we got swept by Orlando heading right. into that offseason right and I want to get my plug in right now you are watching the coach's corner NBA playoffs roundup post game show we've got right now they're brought to you by our friends at the beacon drive-in by the west side club by the fellowship of christian athletes by concoction ministries larry's trophies and vic bailey volkswagen that brings us you know to some of our my next things are you know what we got to do to get better first of all Cody has got to go to the weight room, and and I really and I really think he against some of these teams, average teams or maybe teams that the Bobcats were better. He really played, but when he played, went up, he looked a little bit intimidated and looked a little bit kind of weak and, and kind of 
I guess intimidate is the best way to put it, against the Miami Heat and really some things that it, it, it looked like he may have gone back a little bit. Well, well you, you did kind of see that tonight. I mean, one thing you do have to admit is they started Biz. Cody was going to get most of the minutes, but actually halfway during the game, it kind of turned out that Biz was more effective on the floor than Cody because he was more of a rim protector and he wasn't backing down as far as going up and getting physical in the paint. And, and I'm going to go ahead and throw it out there. I'm, it could be going out on a limb and people could be saying, oh, you're just saying that. But I think you're going to see a, a, a totally different Cody next year. I mean, if he gets an offseason in an NBA program working with an NBA team and he works with big guys like Patrick Ewing and he works on his little elbow jump shot because that's going to be key for him is to knock down a jump shot like that. If he works with that with Mark Price and Clifford instills some more stuff into him and he adds some weight in the weight room, I, 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 I literally think this guy could be a starting four next year. But if they bring back Big Roberts, then he'd be a great – off the bench so I, you could see him grow coach as a coach you know at the first of the year you were thinking oh no what have we gotten ourselves into but you could literally watch every game and see him get better as a player yes the playoffs were a little too fast for him but that happens to a lot of rookies no matter how good you are so I, I definitely think you're going to see a, a much improved Cody and I think he is going to be one of the reasons not just whoever we bring in from the outside but I think he's going to be one of the reasons that this team is going to be even better next year because he's going to be even better as a basketball player. And see, it's easy to say this too when you play the two time defending NBA champions probably going for third it exposes a lot of your weaknesses. And again, I don't blame him. I would have probably been a little intimidated playing skin against guys too because there are no bad players on the Heat team. They don't have any, you know, like their 15th man came out of the D League or something like that, though, which brings me to our next guy, Chris Douglas Roberts. I think the Bobcats got everything and more than they could imagine out of this kid they picked up. Uh, I mean, you couldn't ask for more out of Chris Douglas Roberts. The guy came out, he scored in double figures again tonight, and, I, and he laid it all on the line. And this was a guy who, coming into this year, year wasn't sure if he'd even get another chance in the NBA again he was in the D League he, he was in a couple of training camps but was not able to get a spot on somebody's roster uh, but he comes out and he proves himself now he is a free agent so whether or not he winds up back here with the Bobcats is yet to be seen because, again, we go back to what we said about Mick Roberts. He could have earned himself a paycheck around the league. And, and you got to tip your hat to that guy. If he's able to get a bigger contract somewhere else and get a, a, a bigger opportunity, you got to say, man, way to come in and work your butt off for our Bobcats, but congrats on what you were able to earn and get a deal in the NBA. Because, again, you know, will the Bobcats, if he, if he gets an offer from another team, will the Bobcats want to match that? Because to, to, in all reality, is regardless of how good he played, he's still going to be one of your later bench guys. Right. So do you want to pay that much money just to keep him here? Or do you want to say, hey, look how we found Mick Roberts in the D-League this year. If we don't find somebody in free agency, maybe we can find another young guy looking for opportunities. So, but again, you got to tip your cat to CDR. He's a leader. I mean, he, he came in. He fought hard for a spot. He got in the rotation. Clifford gave him a chance, and, and, he, and he definitely got his money's worth, and he definitely earned himself. I think he's earned himself a spot in the league where he doesn't have to worry about going back to the D-League now. Okay. We picked we picked up two new players during the season. We picked up Luke and we picked up Gary right now, though. How do you see them fitting in? Do you see, you know, Gary's got one year left on his contract. Will they try to keep him? Will they try to move him? Will they bring Luke back and all? And, you know, that, that's kind of mixed reviews right now. I, I, in my mind on that deal that I'd love to have had uh, – when, when teams were, were trying to take Kemba out of the game, I, I would like to have had Sessions back. I, would they would be willing to even go back after him to get to try to re-sign as a backup point guard again? Though, but what do you see developing with that situation? Well, we're gonna have, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, we're gonna have to do some more shows on this because we could talk. <laughs> that's but that's what's great about it. The Bobcats have so many opportunities and so many chances to make this team better. I'm just we, wetting their that, appetite that, out well, there. We could talk about it for days, and uh, we go back to the trade. Um, you know, yes, we hated to lose Sessions, and and, and it's hard. It's hard. You can't play high sight now just because those two guys didn't play great in the playoffs. I would have made the deal. I think Neil is a good shooter. Now he goes out and shoots over 7 from the three-point line tonight, but he did have double digits. He was able to knock down some shots. He's under contract, so you'll see him next year. Maybe if he's under for a full year under Clifford, maybe he gets better as a player. He still can shoot the ball lights out regardless of how bad he shot. He's a he's a knockdown shooter, so that'll help you off the bench. On the flip side, Ridnour is a free agent. I don't. I, I can already go ahead and tell you I don't see him coming back at all. Um, you know, this trade was more for Gary Neal to get a shooter like that, but to get, you know, it was good still to get Neil to have another point guard on the bench, but I don't see him coming back at all. He's a veteran. He's he's had some back issues. He, he's turned the ball over a lot in this playoff series. Two big series. turnovers yeah, in the third I, quarter. I, I don't see him back, and you talked about it. Sessions is a free agent, and when the Bobcats were up in Milwaukee, um, one of the writers had a chance to ask Sessions how would he feel about coming back to Charlotte, and he said he would love to come back here, so maybe that is an option. You go back and get him, and then you have the best of both worlds. You get Sessions back, and you get Gary Neal, but I also could 
see them maybe looking for even a better upgrade than Ramon for a backup point guard. Right. Because I'm telling you, this team is close. If they can get a couple pieces, you know, whether it's getting uh, we're getting a new shooting guard, which we'll get into in a yeah. second, or or, or, or <laughs> we saving that for last, or getting a better backup point guard, that's what's going to make this team better. And as good as Sessions is, and he, he's a good scorer, but he doesn't get a lot of people involved. So maybe you find a, a better backup point guard than him who can score and get people involved. So that's going to be options. But if they brought Sessions back, I wouldn't be mad about it because the guy's a team player and he can get to the rim and get to the line. So we'll see what happens with that in the offseason. All right, question right here, though, and this is another dilemma, and this is what Rich Cho will have, makes the big bucks for right now. He does. What do you do with a situation like MKG? This is a guy right here, great defender, but is never going to be much of a score. A lot of situations this year, at the end of a ball game, Coach Clifford had to put the other alphabet soup guy in because he was an offensive threat, whereas you know Michael Kidd Gilchrist has got – the ugly shot. It's a shame that nobody has ever worked with this kid, with his shot, with the athletic ability he's got. I mean, for a guy to make it to pros and got that ugly of a shot, it's amazing that he's accomplished what he has. But could this be a possible player that, that gets moved to bring in, you know, something – we need another backup center. We need somebody who can shoot. Uh, we're going to need a backup point guard, but could this be a guy that over n number two overall draft choice that you move? Well, I'm, well I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lump all the wings in together. That includes okay. a small four with MKG, and that includes a shooting guard with Gerald Henderson. Okay. For the Bobcats to get better, and if they expect to win a playoff series, their wings have got to be way better. So my thing, the way I look at it is, you've got to get better at, at least one of those two spots. So do you want to get rid of MKG, who's only 20 years old, and is in his second year, or and we know he has offensive deficiencies, or do you want to upgrade at a shooting guard and get rid of Gerald Henderson, who's been in the league, what, six years now? Mm -hmm. So my thing about it is I know I know MKG has deficiencies, but I still think he is a very good defender. I mean, you can't see that against LeBron because of how good LeBron is, but I thought he played pretty well defensively in this series. Um, and I think working with Mark Price, continuing to work, I've heard people say that to change his jump shot, it could take a couple of years. Well, Mark Price started working with him in the offseason here, and he's going to work with him through this offseason. So maybe you'll start to see at least a little bit of an improvement where he can knock it down sometimes. If he continues to do that in attack and can, gets better as a defender, why would you want to give up on a guy who's only 20 years old compared to a guy who you've seen what he can do for six years? So that's why I say keep MKG as a starter. Um, you know, and you think about it, you just talked about your guy, Jeffrey Taylor. Yep. If he comes back healthy, then you're pretty deep at small four because Taylor is a really good player as well. So my thing is keep that there, continue to develop those two young guys who have only been in the league two years, and then upgrade a shooting guard. Because for me, I'll go ahead and say it. We've been waiting for the whole show to say this. Again, not a bad show. But it's time to move on from the Gerald Henderson experiment. And, and like I say, he's a Duke player. We both love Duke. We're right there, though. But And we've supported and backed him. He's but a that, great guy. that is the, the weakness on this team, that people have said it. The national media has said it. This team is a shooting guard away from being a solid top four team in the East for a long time to and come. And the reason I lumped the shooting guard and the small four together is because if you talk about all of MKG's deficiencies, well, think about this. If you get a shooting guard who can score better, and who can really take pressure off the defense, that lightens the load on MKG. So maybe you don't need MKG's offense as much, and he can focus more on defense. But when you have a starting shooting guard like MKG and you have a starting shooting guard like Gerald Henderson who are both struggling to score, that's a disaster. So you got to have one of those two have got to be able to take pressure off of it. So would you rather upgrade a small forward or would you rather upgrade a shooting guard? And that's why I say I know MKG has a lot of deficiencies, but, again, I'm not going to give up on a – he's 20 years old, Coach, 20 years right. old. I'm not going to give up on that well, yet. If you can get a good player for him, if because because you you've got a guy right now, you've got a Jeffrey Taylor who, if coming off this injury, we got to wait and see, but can play defense like MKG yep. and can shoot it. That you could slide right into that position and maybe get a good player because he was a number two overall. If the deal's there and you can get a, a a huge upgrade at small forward, you absolutely have to take it. But I just think looking at this front office, I just think they're not going to give up on MKG this off this easy, this quick. As a guy who's only 20 years old. To years in the league. I mean, you look at a lot of these guys around the league, Coach, they're not really reaching their potential now that they come out one and done until four years into the league. So that's why I say I don't think they're going to give up on him, But I, and I'm not, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I have a very strong feeling 
that they're going to upgrade the shooting guard because take a look at this. In the regular season, Gerald Henderson, I believe, averaged 13 or 14 points a game. And then coming into the night, he was only averaging nine points in the playoff series. You can't go backwards. Well, I'm going to say I'm going to say it's even worse than that, that you've got a D-League player in the beginning of the year who averaged more than a guy who signed a big yeah. contract. And if you're a shooting guard who just got a contract last year and you're also a captain on this team, and I know a lot more goes into captain than just on the floor because you've got to be a leader, and Gerald Henderson is a leader. But you can't go backwards in the playoffs when they need you to step up and play your best basketball. Your your scoring cannot go down, especially when you have a guy like Al banged up. you got to step up even more, and that didn't happen. This, for me, was a show-me series for Gerald Henderson. Show me that you're going to be a part of this future because this team has taken off. The Hornets, the the, the win improvement, the, the cap room they've got, and I, and I totally expect a change at shooting guard in the offseason, so we'll see what happens. And, and, again, I agree with that, too. And, you know, tonight it, I thought that he may – because he got knocked down a couple times, he got mad, he got and he got a little fire in his rear end in the first half, and he actually picked his game up a little bit, though. Seven but points in the first quarter. You know what he finished with? Nine. Ele I think 11. 11. And, but, but he goes back in that funk in the second half right there, and it's almost as like he has taken the role. We got this big money, the Al and, and Kimba are our two stars, and I don't want to screw it up, so I'm not even going to look to score. I'm not going to look to shoot. I'm going to pass but the ball. But Al's not in the game. And right. <laughs> and, 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 well, I'm just saying, yeah, he's I understand. not fair, and yeah. he had to same mentality there and we paying too much money for a shooting guard that won't shoot you can't score seven points in the first quarter without your best offensive player and, and play he played well in the first quarter but you can't score seven against the two time defending champions in the last three quarters score four and expect to win the game when you're one of the supposed to be one of the better offensive options on this team and so that's why i say it was a show me series I, i'll say it again i like gerald henderson he's one of the better players to talk to in the locker room he is a nice leader guy. nice guy nice, nice guy. guy he's a team player he's a leader but when it comes to on the court if you're wanting to improve this team to contend in the playoffs, you got to get the output, and I just didn't see it in this playoff series. He is a two and a half point jumper. He, he's a, he's he's a bench a, guy. We're right here. We're on the three point line in the corner. He's about three feet in that line, and that's his shot. He will not take a three, but he'll take a two and a half in a heartbeat. Honestly, he is. A, he's not. A, for, to me, he's not a starter in this league. I think he can provide some impact off the bench. I think he plays decent defenses sometimes. So he's got a spot in this league. Don't get me wrong. It's not some of these guys where we're kicking him out of the league. He's just not a go to starter that you need on a playoff basketball team. So whether or not they improve the starting shooting guard and keep him on the bench or whether they put him in a trade. I see it more putting him in a trade because you still have Gary Neal, Jeffrey Taylor, all those guys coming back. So I, I, I see Henderson's time coming to an end. Again, I could be wrong, but that's just kind of how I'm feeling after this playoff series. It is kind of interesting because this time, last time, Bobcats were in the playoffs. We saw and knew after that playoff series was over the end of Raymond Felton. Right. That it was gone because right. that he got exposed uh, in right. that game and, and Augustine became the point guard. So it's kind of like, you know, this is something – we talked about this. When you play a team like the Miami Heat, it exposes your weaknesses, and it stuck out like my sore fingers right here, exactly what the weakness is on this team, and it's a shooting guard. Well, the bottom line is, and, and I think the best quote I heard, from, I heard from Coach Clifford tonight, and this goes not only to coaching, but he said to the players, is regardless of what you do in the regular season, however many wins you have, however successful you are, if you don't win in the playoffs, you're not going to be playing long, you're not going to be coaching long. And he, he used two good examples. They were in Houston. They took a lottery team to the playoffs, but they never advanced far in the playoffs, and they were gone. They go to Orlando. They make it to a finals. But then the next two years, they lose in the first round both times. That coaching staff's gone. Mm -hmm. So, again, you can have it's great to win 43 games in a regular season. It's great to do all that. But if you're trying to be a, a, a team in the playoffs every year and a team that gets past the first round and contends, you've got to win in the playoffs. And Coach said it. For his job, he might have done a good job in the regular season, but if he doesn't come back next year and improve and win in the playoffs, then he's not doing his job. And that's the same thing for the players. You can't just go out there and be decent in the regular season and then be bad in the playoffs. That's when the lights come on and you got to be ready to go. Kemba showed that when the lights were on the night, he was ready to step up. Henderson didn't show that to me. I would love to have seen what this team could have done. Number one, if Al had stayed healthy. He did not have a you single have game healthy. Uh, what they would have been doing. Oh, and, okay, in the playoffs. Right. Yeah, what right. they would have been doing there had they – had a healthy owl, and had they played somebody other than the Heat first round. Well, what I'm saying is that you talk about a healthy owl in the playoffs, if you would have had a healthy owl the first stretch of the season, you wouldn't have been playing the Miami Heat because you finished one game out of the fifth spot and you missed, I would say, 10 to 12 games of Al the first of the year. So if you had those 12 games with Al, you win. Just say you win three of the 12 and you go three and nine. Yeah then you're in the fifth seed, maybe the fourth seed. So you stay away from the Miami Heat. And it's, it's just a bummer. I mean, it's it's kind of it's kind of the luck the Bobcats are going to end on, right? They had bad luck in the lottery. They had, You know, they've had bad luck with draft picks. Well, now they, they finally have probably their best team ever, and they probably can contend with any team in the East. And what happens? 
bad luck and they're matched up with the Miami Heat and the sweep and that's the Bobcats. And the last time they made the playoffs, they had the best team in the league then, who was Dwight Howard and the Orlando Magic, yep. and played a number one seed, though. But you know what? That closes the chapter on the Charlotte Bobcats. Now, I wore, I've got my Bobcat colors on tonight. I hope you see that I tried to bring them a little extra luck. I'll have to save my Bobcat color coat and this outfit for when we have throwback night. Yeah. Whenever they, <laughs> if they ever yeah. pull the throwback uniforms out and do that, though. But it's it's been a lot of fun with this yeah. team. And Lord knows we sat here, what, two years ago with seven wins, and it almost drove us crazy. Well, not just this team. I, I wanted to take this time to say, you know, I know it's still going to be the same organization, same owner, same, you know, PR staff, you know, all those guys coming back. But the Bobcats, even though it's been a lot of down years, their the organization really has treated us well as media. Right. They, I think they treat the fans well when you come out to a game for entertainment experience, a family experience. Um, even though the product on the court might not have been there the whole time, this organization has been a class act to us, so we have to thank them for everything for 10 years, you know, for as long as we've been covering the Bobcats. I think this is my fifth year, I think five or six years for you now, So, right. and, it, and it's been great. And we, we're, we're proud to, to cover this team, and we're, we're proud to go from the lows to the highs and now we finally think we got a team who can maybe contend like this on a regular basis and it makes it fun and, and I think I can speak for both of us that we're really excited to see the comeback of the Charlotte Hornets and we're going to be excited to be a part of it. We are and it's neat and I, I want to go and echo what you're saying too the friends and relationships that we've made I know that we look right now and not only the team but the Lady Cats how many Lady Cats work for us Absolutely. now you know Brandy has provided us the opportunity of working with the Lady Cats and we've got several of them Christy Kelly uh Lindsay, all yeah. the ones that have come, the current ones that have actually come and helped some of the ones that do some things right there, and we should have some more in the future right now too. But, I mean, just all the people of the organization have been so good to us. Josh, yeah. uh, Mike. Mike, even BJ this year. when he was here. He I mean, was here. Yeah. And my bow tie buddy in there Jerome. too, Jerome in there too, that they have always made us feel welcome, which I can honestly say that's not the case where everywhere I go. Exactly and that's one thing why this year uh, there was one college basketball team I never attended one of their games this year because I'd rather came here because it's like having friends and family up here that I would rather come up here and, and be made to feel welcome up here than go down and not be respected for what I do at some of the other places. Yeah, it's been, it's been a lot of fun. And coming from a native Charlottean, I mean, I was I was here. I was I was four when the Hornets first got here, so I grew up on that. And I mean, it's just I, I was passionate about the Hornets. But when they left, I, I, I've always supported my teams. I know a lot of people didn't jump on board with the Bobcats when they first came back because they were angry how the Hornets left. But I'm always going to support any team here in Charlotte. And with the Bobcats, you know, I think a lot of people started to get on board late and realize that this is a, go a good organization. But I've supported them throughout the whole 10 years, and I and I'll be right there for the Hornets. And I'm just glad that Charlotte has, like you said, we talked about a good people, a good organization to really to really represent the city well because they do a lot of stuff for the community as well so they, they I mean you can't say it enough it's a bright bright future for the Charlotte Hornets and, and, and two professional teams in Charlotte make yeah. the playoffs Both that we cover teams. great people to work with yeah. we have to get working with the baseball team next yeah I'm gonna have to see what we can do on that it, though so. I mean it's probably what you, you just mentioned that coach is probably one of the best times to be a, a Charlotte sports fan now with, it is with your Panthers going to the playoffs your Bobcats going to the playoffs and if you haven't been over to that I know you're ready to go and I'm yeah. gonna take you that beautiful brand new BBNT ballpark over there in downtown Charlotte. They're, they're selling on almost every game, so the fans are behind that. It's a great time to really be a sports fan in Charlotte. Well, like I say, it's just a hop, skip, and a jump up the road for me, That's and right. we look forward to adding that to our coverage to you, too, that mm -hmm. we'll have South Carolina baseball here the rest yeah. of the year following the Gamecocks throughout the World Series, hopefully the College World Series playoffs right there, too, and just got confirmation, too, that, that Coach Tony and I and several of our other people will be covering NASCAR coming up here with the Memorial Day Coke 600 and the All-Star race it will be here too so charlotte's a great great place don't live here but i feel like i do i spend as much time <laughs> like here as i do in spartanburg <laughs> coming up and down the road had to buy me a new set of tires last week from that though but again we look forward to bringing you great coverage from charlotte and all the surrounding areas absolutely i look forward to it and like i said now we take it maybe take a little time off from the pro sports finish up college baseball like you talked about and then sooner before you know it panthers training camp will be here so well before that too we will be back with you doing reports too yes, on the right. nfl draft absolutely live from down the street it up there. It doesn't it stop. And stops. we'll be back here, too, for the NBA draft. So yeah, I'm excited you, about this. And hopefully, if they'll ask me, I'll be back for judging the Lady Cats, yeah, Brandy. Listen, now, let's see. You, me and you both messed up. I said, this is going to be an exciting Bobcats offseason. And you said Lady Cats. It's going to be the Honey Honey Bees. Yeah. It's going to be an exciting Hornets offseason. So a lot of stuff to look forward to coming up with, with Charlotte Sports. Well, I've got my teal and purple again. I hate to have to put my peach color coat up here and my stuff there. But
but at least I got one wear out of them tonight. Absolutely. I'll still wear my Bobcat stuff around town. And we still got, Dustin made a promise. We still have not seen his bow tie. I will wear Maybe that. he'll have I to will. wear that to the opener next year. Yeah, uh, To the opener, to draft night, something. I'll wear something for y'all for a video. All righty. Well, that's going to do it tonight for Time Warner Arena. As we wrap up, the NBA season with the Charlotte Bobcats has come to an end now. It's hard to believe that next time you see this court and we do a show here, it's going to be the Hornets here. It'll be a different color. I'll be wearing different colors. He'll be wearing different colors there. But the next time we do a game here, it will not be the Bobcats. It will be the return of the bzzz. The Hornets are back. It's been fun.